If you use cable cutters often, you know that a good set can make or break the day. And if you're like me, you might wonder what is the best set of heavy duty, high leverage cable cutters out there for the money. So today I'm going to test eight different brands starting at $6.50 going all the way up to $40. And we're going to see what's the best cable cutter for the money. The ATE Pro USA 10 inch cable cutters come in at $6.50 have a super fine hand polished face for ultimate sleek professional finish, perfect for cutting stainless steel rope, steel wire, AC, SR cable, and aircraft cables. The ATE Pro USA is made in China. The ATE Pro weighs 15 ounces. The Down For Sound Shop 10 inch heavy duty cable cutter comes in at $20 and it says it can cut through 4 aught cable with ease. There is no country of origin listed on the Down For Sound 10 inch heavy duty cable cutters. The Down For Sound cable cutters weigh 14.8 ounces. The Crescent Whist 9 and a quarter inch cable cutters come in at $21, have high leverage jaws with sheer cut blades, non-slip cushion grip handles for comfort, not designed for cutting steel or ACSR cable. The Crescent Whist 9 and a half inch cable cutters are made in China. The Whist cable cutters weigh 15 ounces. The Doyle High Leverage 10 inch cable cutters come in at $23. Designed for use with 4 aught aluminum, 2 aught soft copper. Induction hardened cutting edges deliver superior cutting performance. Shear type jaws grip cable for smooth controlled cutting. High leverage design rivet is closer to the cutting edge for greater force. Hot riveted joint for smooth action with no wobble. Plastic dipped handle provides comfort during extended use. The Doyle 10 inch high leverage cable cutters are made in Taiwan. The Doyle cable cutters weigh 18.3 ounces. The channel lock 9.5 inch cable cutters come in at $26, have improved alloy steel construction, cuts up to 4 aught aluminum and 2 aught copper, not for steel or ASCR, comes with blue channel lock comfort grips. The channel lock 911 9.5 inch cable cutters are made in the USA. The channel lock cable cutters weigh 13.5 ounces. The Greenlee 9 and a quarter inch cable cutters come in at $28. They have heavy duty forged steel for cutting copper, aluminum, and 100 pair communication cable, heat treated precision ground shear action curved cutting blades, rust resistant black oxide finish, high leverage handles for easier cutting. The Greenlee 9 and a quarter inch cable cutters are made in Taiwan. The Greenlee cable cutters weigh 19.3 ounces. The Southwire 9-inch cable cutters come in at $33. They have drop forge USA steel for durability. Cuts up to 4 aught aluminum and 2 aught copper cables. Hot riveted pivot joint for smooth action and no handle wobble. Induction hardened hand sharpened cutting blades for long lasting cutting surfaces. The 9-inch Southwire cable cutters are made in the USA. The Southwire cable cutters weigh 16.27 ounces. The Klein High Leverage Journeyman Cable Cutters come in at $39.99. Cuts up to 4 aught aluminum, 2 aught soft copper. High leverage designed for exceptional cutting capability and precision one-handed shearing action. Integrated stripping holes for 1 aught and 2 aught cable. State of the art dual material journeyman handles provide better grip without sacrificing tool strength. Made in the USA from forged custom USA made tool steel for maximum durability. The Klein Journeyman Cable Cutters weigh 15.29 ounces. If you have to have the absolute lightest pair of cable cutters, check out the channel locks. All the rest of them are very close except for the Doyle and Greenlee, which do have some extra heft. So it's more of a preference how you like it to feel in the hand. Do you want it light or do you want it more substantial? The jaw opening on the ATE Pro USA cable cutters is around one inch and three quarters. The jaw opening on the Down For Sound cable cutters is around an inch and three quarters. The jaw opening on the whisk cable cutters is around one inch. The jaw opening on the Doyle cable cutters is around one and five eighths of an inch. The jaw opening on the channel lock cable cutters is about one and three quarters of an inch. The jaw opening on the Greenlee is about one and five eighths of an inch. The jaw opening on the Southwire cable cutters is about one and five eighths of an inch. The jaw opening on the Klein cable cutters is about one and one quarter inch. The jaw opening is crucial when it comes to cutting larger gauge wire. 
The width was absolutely atrocious at one inch. The decline was just behind it at an inch and a quarter. All the rest of them are acceptable. The downforce sound, the ATE Pro, and the channel lock did have an opening of an inch and three quarter, which I thought was very nice and very handy to have. For my testing rig, I'll be using a vise mounted to my bench. I'll have the pliers locked in with one jaw up. I will be cutting one out welding cable as well as one out car audio cable. And finally, we'll see if it can handle 4 aught welding cable. I'll be using an analog push-pull meter set into peak hold mode to see exactly how much force it takes to cut one out welding cable, one out car audio cable, and we'll see if the cutters can handle 4 aught welding cable. With this meter, it is set up in peak hold, so we're going to be able to get the total force it takes to actually cut through the wire and don't worry when it slams down that's not going to measure because it's not going to be as much force that it is actually cutting the wire starting off with the ate pro cutting one out welding cable and it looks like we have 257 newton meters now we're cutting one out car audio cable with the ate pros and we have 254 newton meters now we're going to try to cut four out welding cable with the ate pros and it was definitely quite a task it did make it through the fraying you see is just because I cut it a little bit close, but it did it at 255 Newton meters. Now let's check the cut quality on the ATE Pro USA cutters. This actually gave me a much better cut than I expected on the welding cable and on the car audio cable. Not too bad at all. Now we're down to the down for sound cable cutters on one aught welding cable and it did it right at 255 newton meters. Now we're on to the one aught car audio cable on the down for sound cable cutters and it ended up doing it right at 263 newton meters. The down for sound is now going through the four aught welding cable and it did make it through but it took quite a bit of force at 269 newton meters. Now let's take a look at the cut quality on the down for sound cable cutters. I think it cut pretty well, no strands left. The same result on the one out car audio cable. The down for sound cable cutter is even done pretty well on the four aught welding cable. Nice clean cut, left a little bunched up there but not too bad at all for the force it took. I've been having to clamp my vise so tight that it's been leaving a little smuts on the uh, handle here on the other two so from this test going forward I'm gonna have this. Now we're on to the crescent whisk cable cutters and we're doing the one aught welding cable. It cut through at 251 newton meters. We're on to the one aught car audio cable with the whisk cable cutters and it did cut through it at 265 newton meters. With the one inch jaw opening, the whisk just really is not made to cut four aught welding cables, so it's going to be a fail on this test. Now let's talk about the cut quality on the whisk cable cutters. With the one aught welding, it did cut it cleanly, but I don't know if you can tell in video, it did squish it down quite a bit, so we have a lot of pinch out even on the one out welding cable. Same thing happened even on the car audio cable, it really squished it down and kind of put it up into a point, but it did cut cleanly and it did not miss any strands. Now we're on to the Doyle cable cutters and one out welding cable, and it did it pretty easily at 220 newton meters. Now we're on to the one out car audio cable and the Doyle cuts it pretty well too, but it took 270 newton meters to do it. And now we're gonna test the Doyle cable cutters with four aught welding cable. Let's see if it can do it. And it did do it and it took the same amount of force, 270 newton meters. Now let's talk about the cut quality on the Doyle cable cutters. I will note that by far, this has been the easiest to cut uh, feel wise with me pushing the gauge up until this point anyway. So let's look at the cuts. It cut the one out welding cable with ease. Nice clean cut. It also cut the one out car audio cable, no problem at all with a nice clean cut, no extra strands. And it easily cut the four aught, although it did munch it up just a little bit. Now we're on to the channel lock cable cutters with the one aught welding cable. And it took 270 newton meters to cut through the one aught welding cable. Now we're on to one aught car audio cable with the channel lock cable cutters. And this one only took 263 newton meters to get all the way through. 
Now we're on to the 4 out welding cable with the channel lock cable cutters and it took an extraordinary amount of force, 302 newton meters. Let's talk about the cut quality on the channel lock cable cutters. I will say that it did struggle mightily on the 4 out, but it got it cut through. Now let's take a look at the cuts themselves. So the one out welding cable, it is a clean cut. It did pinch it a little bit, much like the WIS, but not nearly as bad. Same result with the cardio cable, nice clean cut, but it did pinch it a little bit. On the four out welding cable, it, uh, it did pinch it some, but it cut a lot better than some of the other ones, surprisingly, although it took a lot of force. Now we're testing the Greenlee cable cutters on one knot welding cable and by far the easiest yet at 158 newton meters. Now we're trying the Greenlee on one knot Caradio cable and again cuts like butter and this time at only 145 newton meters. Now we're on to four knot welding cable with the Greenlee cable cutters and I do have to use a little more force than the others but it still comes through at 256 newton meters which is less than it took some of the other cable cutters to get through one op. We're going to check the cut quality on the green lead cable cutters but I do want to mention these have cut through the easiest with the least amount of force by feel in my hand. So let's start with the one out welding cable. Really clean cut. It squeezed it just a little bit, not too bad. The one out cardio cable, pretty clean cut. Although it did get some squeezing right in the middle, some pinching right in the middle. The four out welding cable, got a little bit of squeeze, not as bad as some of the other ones. We're on to the south wire cable cutters and I'm just gonna let it fast forward and play because not only was I not able to cut it with the meter, when I cut it by hand, it did not cut all the way through on any of the cables, so it's a complete and total failure. Now let's talk about the cut quality on the south wire cable cutters. And I'm just gonna say it that they are absolutely atrocious. They failed every test. They would not do it with the meter. Not only were the grips slippery, but it just would not cut through it until I put both hands on it and really bear down on it as hard as I could. Let's look at the results. All the results are the same. Didn't completely cut through the welding cable. Did not completely cut through the car audio cable. Did not completely cut through the 4 out cable. Total fail. Now we're on to the Klein cable cutters with one out welding cable. And it done it easily at 117 newton meters. Now we're on to the one out car audio cable and the Klein cable cutters. And again, like butter, 118 newton meters. Now we're on to the four out welding cable on the Klein cable cutters. And again, it cuts it the best out of any cable cutters we've tested yet at only 181 newton meters. Now let's talk about the cut quality of the Klein journeyman pliers. I will say that by far, these are the easiest time I had cutting any of the wire. And I think that will show out in the results once I roll back the video and see exactly where we were. But let's check out the cut quality and uh, see how it did. Cut quality is really good on the one out welding cable. It didn't squeeze it at all, sliced right through it. Same result on the one out car audio cable. Didn't squeeze it at all, sliced through it like butter. On the four out welding cable, you do see a little burr here, but it actually cut through it pretty easily. When you're buying cable cutters, probably the most important factor is cut quality and the amount of force it takes to make that cut. And in this aspect, the Klein and Greenlee really stand above the rest. Every other cable cutter actually did fairly well outside of the south wire, which was an absolute fail on every type of wire. But the ATE Pro, the Downforce Sound, the Wiz, the Doyle, the Channel Lock, all did pretty well. It just takes a little bit more force and you might get a little bit more squeeze on your cuts. Now this test will be a little subjective being that I'm going to test for feel. I'm going to cut up some 2 watt welding cable. I'm going to see how it feels in my hand. This will definitely be different for you. This is just kind of my preference on which ones I think feel better in my hand. Now these, they open up pretty well, not too bad. They don't have a lot of wobble in the handles, which I like, especially for a cheap pair. The motion is not smooth though, so it's a little hinged and it doesn't feel super good when you're going like this, but we'll see. As far as hand feel, I think they're okay. They're very basic and you can tell that they are an inexpensive pair of cable cutters. 
For feel on the ATE Pro USA, I'd probably say it's a 2.5 out of 5. Let's test the feel of the down for sound cable cutters. These are much smoother than the ATE Pro USA's. Definitely have a nice smooth action to them. They don't have any wobble into the handle, so not too bad. This is a $20 pair, and you can tell we definitely stepped up from this cheaper pair. Oh yeah, easy. These feel good in the hand. I think the ergonomics are pretty good and uh, not too bad for a $20 pair of cutters. For the feel of the cut on the down for sound cable cutters, I'd say it's three right in the middle. Not bad, not great, just kind of what you'd expect. Now we're on to the whisk cable cutters. These are just over $20, I believe 23. The action on these is very, very tight. It's, it's hard to open. You cannot open it that far. So, and once you do, they're very hard to close again. Just on that alone, I can tell you that I don't like them. There's zero wobble inside the hinge point. The handle is okay. It's not the best shape, but these just cut very poorly. You can see right here, they already kind of feel wore down and we've barely cut anything with them. Um, I just, I really don't like the feel of these at all. As far as feel on the Wiss, I would say it's the worst so far, and I'm gonna give it a one because that's as low as I'm going. Now we're gonna talk about the comfort and feel of the Doyle cable cutters. I can tell you that they do feel good in the hand. They have a little bit thicker plastic handle than the Down for Sound, and you can feel it. It's a little more comfort grip. The shape of it comes out a little bit more. I think it feels a little bit better in hand. It's a little heavier. The action is much smoother, and uh, this is super, super smooth. This feels like a very high quality pair of cable cutters. There's definitely no play in the Doyle as well. It's a really solid joint. It does have some heft to it, so it's a little bit heavier, but I like the feel of it in hand. And it absolutely ripped through that two gauge like it was nothing. So far, these are the best feeling in hand yet. And I'd give these, honestly, I'd give these a five. Now let's check out the Channel Lock 911s. These are kind of more compact than most. They're skinnier this way, they're lighter, they have a lighter handle, they have a thinner handle material. It actually feels pretty good in hand, but I would say the ergonomics are better than the handles because you can feel the metal underneath and it's just not as comfortable as the Doyle. As far as the joint, there is no flex, no give to it whatsoever. Very solid. So it cut through the two gauge welding cable pretty good, not bad at all. This definitely didn't feel as good as the Doyle. I would say it's in the ballpark of the Downford Sound at about a three, about middle of the road. Although I do like the size of it. I like that it's more compact. I think that that hinders it just a bit. Now we're on to the Greenlee. The feel of the Greenlee is really great. The handle material, it's got a dual material. Really, really solid. Feels comfortable in the hand. Very easy to grip. It's heavy. It's probably the heaviest pair of cutters that we have in this comparison, but it's not too bad in the hand. The joint is super sturdy. No give, no flex whatsoever. And the action is not as smooth as the Doyle, but it's still pretty smooth. It's on par with the channel lock. So what the Greenlee misses in the smoothness of action, it makes up for in sharpness. And this thing absolutely rips through any wire that I put it on. And for that, I would say that the feel is a four. I'm not giving it a five. I think that the Doyle beats it in overall feel, but this being sharper, it just cuts a little bit better. Um, so it's very close. It's a very close pick so far. Now we're on to the feel of the south wire. So as far as the handle shape, I think it's not bad. It's, it's slider than most. It doesn't have a really big curve like some of them do. The handle material is nice. It has the dual handle material. It feels pretty solid in hand. The action of opening and closing it is not too bad. It does have a little hitch towards the end, but uh, overall that feels pretty good. 
same problem as before it did not cut through let's give it one more try just to see if it was a fluke yeah definitely definitely atrocious um i would say that they don't feel too bad that that's the problem they don't they cut through seemingly okay when they get through but they don't cut through all the way i think it's a uh maybe a manufacturer tolerance issue but this pair um i have to give it a one just because it didn't cut through the wire but if i were if it did cut through the wire i would say it's the middle of the pack as far as the feel of it in hand now we're going to see how the feel of the klein journeyman are in hand and I didn't mention this earlier, but every other cable cutter in the comparison is brand new before the testing. This set was not new before the testing. It actually had a few months of use, but that didn't stop it. It's just as sharp now as it was the first day I got it. So I was not afraid to put this up against brand new cable cutters. As far as the action on this, super smooth. Probably the smoothest yet. The handles are excellent. And this is by far the most expensive pair, so the handles should be excellent. And they are, they feel really good in hand. It has a slight shape, so it's narrower, it's compact. It's just slightly bigger than the channel lock, which is one of the most compact in the set. This set overall feel in the hand is really, really good. There's no play in the joint whatsoever. Let's cut a few pieces of wire. Yeah, this thing cuts through like butter. Feels good in the hand. And uh, the reason I started this comparison is because I was actually a little disappointed in the performance of these on some wire. After comparing it to these other cable cutters, I gotta say, this one really feels good in the hand and I think I will be keeping this set. So uh, this one's getting a five out of five. So we tested eight different brands of cable cutters and my four favorite are right here. If money is no object, definitely go for the Klein. I think that those are the best. But the Greenlee and the Doyle and the Channel Lock all done very well. If you're on a budget, definitely check out Doyle. They really surprised me in this shootout. Appreciate each and every one of my Patreon supporters, but a special shout out goes to the six star or more members. 2001 Monolithic, Gene Nava, Joaquin Juarez, El Fuego, Travis McClendon, Brandon Hanna, William Berg, Boxboy Audio Sound Solutions, Jesus Tires, Dennis Cromwell Jr., Scott Dielbeck, D. Stewart, Aaron Waltz, David Koslick, Scott McCord, Matthew Tolberg, Debo Bass, Corey D., Trucker9000, and Bobby Burkett. For as little as $2 a month, you can join the team, get exclusive Patreon-only content, behind-the-scenes stuff, and early access to videos. So if you're interested in any of this, check me out at patreon.com slash high 5 vega Thanks for watching this video, and I just want to give a shout out to Project Farm who kind of inspired me to do this kind of comparison in the first place. If you haven't watched his channel and you like this kind of stuff, you're going to love what he does. He's a real pro. But that's it. I hope you did enjoy this video. Let me know what your favorite pair of cable cutters are in the comments below. I hope to see every single one of you on the next video.